Hello and welcome to the last word on Spurs, your award-winning Tottenham Hotspur podcast. We are back, 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 where therapy is on the cards here on this edition of the show as Tottenham Hotspur suffer a 4-2 defeat to Ball, uh, to Bournemouth. Let's hope that's not I think, I think a sign of things to come. Let's hope it's not. To Brighton up at the MX. That's where my mind is already, already unfortunately on Bournemouth to come. That's what I'm dreading. I'm joined by three, look. They're great returning regular guests here to last one on Spurs. I'm joined by the brilliant Richard Cracknell, the superb Patrick Tyrant, and Dr. Tottenham's very, very own Vas Cohen, the doctor. What we're going to need on the back of that defeat, of course, up at the Amex. Look, due to time constraints, obviously I say we wish these guys well off air. We're going to get right into this one. Cracks, I'm going to open the show with you. Crazy, crazy game. You called it bonkers off air to me there in the green room as to that defeat up at Brighton, uh, who were dominant. They're in control for a good hour of that game before a noble response by Tottenham. Maybe you'd say in response to the way Spurs came back into the game. Uh, Villiers, a cameo, which was a big positive for Ange on what I can only describe as a hugely disappointing night where Spurs were, for me personally, outclassed out through large periods of that game and now stay outside the top four after a fifth loss of the league campaign. A lot for Tottenham and Ange Postacoglu to answer after that one. Crex, thoughts on the game for you? Oh, Rick. Uh, we, we, were, we were shocking tonight. N- no doubts about it. We just... Um, look, it's players. We got players missing, but so are Brighton. So, you know, it's, that, that's that one cancelled out straight away. We have got key, some real key players, but so have they. We we got players in that team that that can offer more than that. Can they offer enough going forward? No, there's a lot of them that do need replacing. But even those that are there tonight were, were embarrassing. As John Joe saying at the bottom of the screen there. Merry Christmas, by the way, viewers and listeners. Uh, outside of all the madness, so poor Patrick there's come all dressed, ready to go for a bit of Christmas festivity. And it's, um, no, we, we we were shocking. I think that comeback was a little bit more Brighton taking their foot off the gas more than anything else. But there was a couple of cameos towards the end. Hill uh, coming on, Villiz, that looked okay. Um, the goalkeeper, Vicario, wow. Like, he's just, he's sensational. So, Always try and find a few positives, you know, within the negatives. You can't just go fully in and just go this and that. Blah, blah, blah. Just try and find a little bit of balance, as we all, as we always do. And I don't know, Rick, because there was moments in that game where we had moments, and they were shocking as well. We were shocking defensively. It was the clown's car on fire back again, wasn't it? And then we were the clown's car smouldering up front as well. We, and we had a few moments where we could have and should have, but but didn't. And I don't know. I, as a game in microcosm, terrible. Overall, the trajectory is still a positive one. I think anybody at the start of the season, if you'd have said where we was, would have taken it. But because of what we've seen uh, and been impressed by it overall, that's made us unimpressed with that tonight, if that if that makes sense. So, uh, no, po- Poxy tonight overall really was. Um, Fire Brigade turned up and and the building was already burned down. Um, you know, it's one, one, of them, one of them nights, isn't it? But that's just not good enough from those players, even though they know that they're going to be fringe or surplus to requirement uh, at some stage. So, Look, window opens on, where are we now? Oh, it's Christmas. Every day is just mm, day, isn't it? What day is it today? Mm, day. It's just a Christmas day. But Monday, the window opens. And I was, I noticed this evening those heritage numbers on the back of the shirts that they've got, the Son and the 85, whatever it is he's got, and Richie 8. I'm hoping that a few more get chiselled into the tablet come Monday because we badly, badly need some personnel coming in, some good quality personnel. I know it's difficult in January, but it is doable. So back over to you, the board. 
um, run down to your go-karts underneath the stadium, see if there's any pound coins that have been put in the slots for them. Uh, I don't know, offer Beyonce a residency and uh, go and open the tills like, where the beer fills, from, fills up from the bottom. Pull, pull some money together and um, let's see if we can't get some decent personnel in to try and give us a little bit more depth in this squad. Yeah. I mean, look, it's really, really tough. Like I say, when you do this reaction, obviously, pod straight after the game, there's lots of emotion. There's lots of passion, lots of frustration. Pat to bring you in and then Vass. Pat, look, despite a late fight back from Spurs, that's still a really, really bad defeat and really bad performance in large periods. Probably the worst, I'd say, under Rand. Ricario was excellent, but a lot of the problems were really in front of him. Brighton had two league wins in 12 before coming into this game and were missing as many players as us. As we know, look, Spurs need players back fast and also need to act in the market. Give me your thoughts, Pat, if you can, on your summary of that game and where we are right now in this crazy train of a ride, as Mr. Lee McQueen calls it. Yeah, you know what? My head's fried, man. I, you know, I've got my Christmas strip on. You don't get many chances to wear this. Obviously, it's the festive period. So I got my Spurs jumping hat on. I was excited coming into this. You know, we only had to win by a win would have taken us into the top four. A juicy win would have taken us third. And then we go and do that. And I just, I think um, Ange today got tactically outclassed, outplayed. You know, De Zerbi just had his number. They had our number the whole game. Um, you don't really see, you know, Brighton are a good footballing team. But today they went over the top quite a few times. They caught us out. We're just lucky that on a few of the chances where they played it over the top, they kind of miscontrolled the ball or the bounce bounce fav- the ball bounced favorably favorably in our yeah, for us. Otherwise, it could have been a cricket score today, man. Vicario had a great first half and he kept out three solid shots, so they could have gone in even more, you know, ahead at half time. They were two 0 up. It could have been five nil, and um, yeah, we just got done, man. We got done on all levels today. Offensively, uh, you know, in, in the final third, they did us. The midfield just seemed more cohesive. And I'm sorry, man. I mean, for me, Big Ange is the one who takes most of the blame today. You've got centre-backs on the on the bench. Play them. I'm tired of seeing uh, full-backs playing as centre-backs. It doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. And we've got lucky on a few occasions. And today, yeah, man, it, you just see that it doesn't work at all. Emerson Royale trying to play out from the back is just... A car show, it's a clown show, it's a calamity waiting to happen. Ben Davis, I know people keep putting out these posts after we win the game, steady Eddie this and steady Eddie that. For me, he's not good enough. He's not been good enough for years. He still shouldn't be in a, in, a, in a Tottenham shirt. It's 2024 and Ben Davis is still starting football games for us. I'm just, yeah, I'm sick and tired of it, man. I mean, today was a good opportunity to really lay a, uh, a stamp down or a marker down and, and really push on. And we've just taken a couple of steps backwards. And like Cracker said, we can't use the injury excuse because they've got loads of injuries and we just don't look like a cohesive team. You can't keep playing centre-backs as full-backs, and, sorry, uh, full-backs as centre-backs and expect, especially when they can't play. They, these guys are not good enough. They're, they're, they're rotational pieces at best and they're starting week in and week out. And this is why in the summer when I was on here saying that we needed another centre-back, you see now why we needed one because today is just... And we've got Bournemouth as well. They're in good form on, on Sunday. Yeah, I'm just not looking forward to it. So, you know, it's the festive period. I know it's like, you know, I'm meant to be on here happy, and but I can't I can't fake it right now. I'm just, yeah, I'm pissed off. I'm fuming after that because it's just a poor performance from top to bottom. I don't really see any any bright shows in that other than Valise scoring. Vicario had a good game, but he let in four goals. You know, that, I, just, I don't know. I don't know what to say, really. Too many players got missing. Sars in the first half, his touch was all over the place. Hoiberg again, we're asking him to do things he can't do. Like for me, Ange needs to understand the team and the players. And it's all well and good playing this high level football, high line, high octane. But if you've got the players that can't play, you don't have the personnel, you're just going to get exposed. And today we got exposed. A, a good manager just exposed us. And we just look stupid today out there. And yeah, it's really frustrating because. You know, like there's ways to win and lose football games. And today, yeah, we had a, a resurgence at the end and a, a bit of a fight. But ultimately, we got done. And um, it was quite embarrassing, to be fair. Like, it was a bad, it was a bad, bad day, to be fair. I think that's the, this is the worst I felt watching Tottenham this season. Vas, I want to bring you in. You are the doctor. 
quite literally on this podcast, coming from the Dr. Tottenham podcast there. You're really animated there. I can see you shaking your head. Vass, look, supposed to take goals. And it was really clear, you know, there was a Potter Coglu side there willing to fight to the last. But as I've said throughout, for me, it was, in my opinion, our most poorest performance of the season. You know, both sides, we can't go away from it, had numerous amount of injuries. With Spurs, it was noticeable. With Brighton, it wasn't. Vass, give me your verdict on how you saw that game for you and the nature of that defeat. And we're going to need you to unmute yourself, if that's okay for us, Vass. Sorry. Okay. So, listen, I, I get there's a lot of emotion at the moment and podding straight after the game probably isn't the best thing to do when emotion is running high. Yes, Brighton had a lot of injuries too, but I'm sure their squad, as it is right now, they're able to play centre-backs as centre-backs, right-backs as right-backs, midfielders as midfielders, etc. Okay, We haven't got that luxury. And we're bemoaning, or, or Patrick and, and Crackers are bemoaning the fact that, you know, we should be playing somebody else in these positions. And I can't see who else we should be playing that would have remedied that performance today. The issue is, uh, thank God for Vicario, okay? He 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 saved us in the beginning. Um, and when that game started, the first four or five minutes, if anyone looked like scoring, it was us. Afterwards... We had issues. We did have issues. They used to, they they were cutting through the through the midfield too easily. Um, a lot of our star players, the ones that we should be able to rely on, like Son and Kulusevski, even Poro, weren't doing what they were normally doing. I think the absence of a recognised centre back is most definitely an issue. We did need one in the summer, but we haven't got one. So what are you going to do? You have to play Eric Dyer in that case. If you want a centre back playing centre back, you have to play Eric Dyer. And I'll tell you something: when Eric Dyer came on at half time against Everton, there were loads of sharp intakes of breath around us in the stadium when he came on. So I don't know if that would have resolved the problem for you. It would have just meant Brian would have attacked us differently because Dyer hasn't got any pace. Um, his positional sense is in question. We struggled today because of Emerson Royale being in that right centre-back role who isn't as comfortable on the ball, who at times looked like he didn't want it. It made the players around him uh, be a little bit more conservative in their play. But even when Brighton went 1-0 up, 2-0 up, we were still getting opportunities. And it was our star players, as I said, that were overhitting passes. We were winning ball back high up sometimes. It wasn't coming off. And when all is said and done, Brian needed two penalties and a 30-yard screamer tonight. Now, people will be listening to me thinking, I'm just putting a gloss on it. There were issues in our performance. That's not in question. But the solutions that everybody wants or, or would have liked to have seen tonight aren't there. They're not there. I don't know who else you could play at centre-back right now in that pairing. And in our midfield, probably I would say probably Hoybier wasn't our worst player on the pitch. Uh, I've Can mentioned three that, players. Yeah, on. just to just to interact with you on that point, I think many mm. are frustrated because we haven't yet really seen Dorrington or Phillips. And look, granted, we don't see them in training, right? So we don't know their level. But I think there is an element of frustration when ultimately all we're hearing behind the scenes is that these players are doing really, really well. Um, they're really very much in our hands. Well, I think that's what we're hearing are from we? behind the scenes. I think this I'm, is just. This is just everybody talking with hindsight. We've seen a bad performance. Mm. And I remember going back to the days of Pochettino in one of his press conferences. Um, I think people were arguing uh, for whoever was not being picked to play or, or whatever. And Pochettino said something along the lines of, it's always the players that aren't playing who are the answer to the problem, aren't they? You had that situation under Mourinho when everyone was calling for uh, Troy Parrott to play, yeah, and he played and he played him, and he, he the the kid looked lost, right? Now I'm not saying we don't give these kids some minutes. We gave Valise some minutes today, but these aren't the solutions. Are we going to be seeing a centre back pairing of Davis and Royale next season, or I even later not. this season? Probably not. Probably not. But if we can't look at that performance today and say that there are positives coming out of it and that there is a style and a plan and a way of playing that we can grasp onto, 
then we should still be excited by that. And talking about the worst performance of the season, I rate this above the Wolves' performance, where we couldn't string two passes together and didn't have a shot for 85 minutes. I rate this even above the West Ham performance, where all we did was knock the ball around and didn't do anything with it and handed them two goals. It wasn't perfect tonight. It was bad at times. I get it. It's really embarrassing to go down 4-0 to a team away from home. But it's really not as bleak as everyone's making out. Yeah, I think it's... we've got to take some perspective here. And it's not, this isn't our, going to be our regular 11, you know? No. No, I mean, again, I think just to come in on that point, there's no doubt about it. You are going to get one-offs, right? I mean, Crack said it throughout, obviously, the summer that we are going to get a few cuffings along the way. I think the, yeah. I, I can only guess, I mean, I'm only trying to understand the frustration that many, many feel out there is that we have seen the numerous players that we're discussing that has let us down time and time and time again that are still starting games. Who, and why Dave, we... All right, so who, who are these players? Davies? No, I think, no, well, I'm not, I'm not labeling Davies, but I think Hoybier is one there for me that tonight, for me, in a press, I feel particularly with him, he goes hiding. And I think this, uh, that's how he I He won felt. the ball back in so far advanced positions on numerous occasions, and we, we did nothing with it. Well, Joel, you know? I'll, I'll agree to disagree with you on that one. I just think, for me, on, on the night, for me, with regards to Hoybier, I felt on a night like tonight where a player there, clearly we no disrespect to him, I think he wants to move and you can't blame him for that. He's used to playing regular first team football and I'm not disagreeing that when he goes on the pitch, he gives his absolutely everything and he's a professional. But I think in the way that Spurs are set up to play under Ange, I don't think personally he is the answer. I mean, I think losing... No, he, he probably hand, isn't and, and neither is yeah. Davies and, and all these yeah. other players. They're yeah. not the answer. They're squad yeah. players at best. But right yeah. now, Yep. There aren't many alternatives, is all I'm saying. No, you're right. You're right. We're working really with what we've got is a shuffle deck yeah. with a number of injuries and we're having to kind of get by in what we've got. I mean, Cracks, I want to bring it back round to you because I want to ask you that question on youth there. I can see you trying to also want to come in on this point. And what I will say is De Zerbi, for me, really was placing his faith in Brighton's youth players in this game. You know, he had a numerous mm. amount of injuries up to eight out. Whereas we know with Angie, he went with the tried and tested to some degree. Um, do you feel... Cracks, obviously, in the back of the list scoring as well this evening. You would like to see some of the youngsters get the opportunity to play? So, at some stage, Mother Bird kicks the chicks out the, the nest, don't they? And they either fly or they, they hit the deck. And, you know, you look at Brighton giving the youngsters a chance. Players like Phillips, I mean, if Ange puts him on and then says to him, look, this is on me, if you you might you might well get turned tonight by an experienced player or you know you might make a couple of mistakes but I'll wear it for you go out there express yourself and I will wear anything that comes your way and I'll put it solely on me um then then give give, give a lad like Phillips a look because I mean you know he's made it to this level and I know it's another level again going into the Prem, and I get where Vaz is coming from, but I'd rather see somebody like Phillips getting a chance because unless he gets chance, chances and makes those mistakes and learns from them, then how, how are you going to learn? So I would rather him come in and maybe give away another couple of goals but get some minutes under his belt, learn from it, and then go, and then go from there, rather than see Dyer or Davies come out again because they're just not the future. I would rather take these cuffings with some kids. Four two, it might as well have been six two, seven two, really in some respects, and and give them some minutes and give them a chance and give them a, a pathway for them to be able to come in and learn. Yeah, it's going to hurt them, but. I, you know, what, what's the character of Phillips? Phillips might be a lad, um, you know, that can suck it up, take it and go, all right, OK, you know, that, that, that one that one stung, but I'll pick myself up, I'll man up a bit, or, you know, I, I know Graham Soon has got slung off air for saying that. I'll person up a bit <laughs> to try and keep things a, a little bit PC. Um, you know, I'll take it on the chin and I'll, and I'll go again. So... I'm I'm all for that. I I, I like to see the, the 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 kids come in, and we as fans just have to go. Okay, don't get on his back. He's a youngster, but he's got some minutes in tonight, and he's got some experience. And next time, 
let's see what happens. See if he's learned from it. See if he has progressed. Um, Hoybier tonight, an experienced uh, com combatant, for me, hiding. Absolutely hiding. I, I can't see where people are saying he had a good game tonight. I think he's hid behind their midfield. I don't think he's come and uh, come and wanted a ball. I just I couldn't see it, and I get that he's probably our only option there at the moment. But within that, he must be able to find a different way to play to what he normally does. He's just not an Ange Postecoglou footballer. He just really is not. So, look again. All roads lead back to the board, making sure that this squad is progressed and uh, um, rotated and knows that aren't for Ange are got out and knows that are for Ange are, are, are brought in. You know, this is this is very much following a blueprint of what happens d down the road. Uh, but they got cuffed tonight, by the way. I hope I haven't spoiled anybody's match of the day. Um, but, you know, he made some brave decisions, um, Arteta. With, with what he'd done and he got backed and they went through some pain and took one step forward and, and three or four, uh, one step back and three or four forward. So, you know, everybody's got to be on board here, Rick. Um, the fans certainly are. They've bought into this, um, bought into Ange Ball, for want of a better phrase. The actual, the players have as well, the whole squad have, they did try and play that football tonight. They just can't play it, some of them. That, that's the problem. So that's there. It needs everybody going forward to make sure that, that we, 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 we progress. We keep progressing. We make some tough decisions on players that, that need to go. Um, and again, look, you get, you get Mickey van der Ven back. You get Romero back. You hopefully, you know, knock out a few silly things that he does. Ditto Basuma, Madison, um, uh, Benton Kerr as well. And that's a totally, totally different team. Totally different team. We haven't had a chance to really see that on, on a good extended, you know, lot, a, a run, run of games. So... Yeah, it's, it, it, was, it was tough. It, it wasn't it wasn't good enough enough tonight overall. There's some people that really need to look at themselves within their performances tonight. But like I said at the top of the show, there was a few moments in that game, and I, I make Vaz right. It, it was it was actually in some respects a better performance than Wolves and and uh, and West Ham. Dare I say? I think I think you're right. There was. There was the actual patterns of play and the will more than there was against Wolves. So, yeah, and so. overall, Ange isn't for isn't for turning, isn't he? He's not going to change. He's going to play this, you know, and he, he'll either you know he'll either sink or swim with it. We're not going to see anything different from him. I know I said a few weeks ago maybe he needs to find a different way when he's not got the personnel. That's not going to happen. So you just go, okay, if that's your way, that's your way. And this is the pain we've got to go through until the, he gets the players that he needs, Rick. Pat, bringing you in, you know, there'll be the element out there. That many feel that the squad is not yet built in Andy's full image. You know, it's been decimated by injuries and yet more suspensions to a level that many have quite never seen. Uh, and games like, you know, what we've seen tonight are maybe an acceptance that they are going to happen. And, Maybe if you can't accept that, then we're going to have disappointing nights maybe doing certain shows like this because I think the way Spurs play is they are very, very open and Brighton took full advantage with that in the way they came at Spurs. And I think, look, it's very, very easy to see to the eye that a centre-back coming in is absolutely crucial to what Spurs need and want to do in the short term. Um, a forward that you may argue may have presence and charisma is yet another thing they may need to look at. But... um for you, Pat, I mean, trying to find some rationale in terms of what we've witnessed here, do you feel this is a complete one-off or do you fear we are going to get games like this from time to time and we're going to have to accept them because, as Crack says, this is just the way we're going to play? Oh, man, I hope and pray it's a one-off, but to be fair with Ange Postacoglu, and I mean this with all due respect, I'm not trying to call anyone out. I'm not trying to, I know, like Vass is saying, it is after the game myself and people in the comments are a bit emotional, but I do think that Ange Postacoglu was very naive today. 
And if he continues to be naive against good managers, we will get found out. And I think and uh, was it uh, Deserbi is a good manager. They were on a bad one of form, but you can see the way they play football and the way he set us up. He set them up today. He's a good manager. He sussed us out. He knew exactly how we were going to play. And we kept playing into their hands. And sometimes you need to be a bit smart, see how the game's going and tweak things and change things. And I didn't see that from Ange today. Sometimes I've seen his in-game management where he tweaks things and changes things. Today, it took way too long. And um, I know the guys on here said that, you know, they've seen worse performances. I disagree strongly. I think in the first 17 minutes, they had about four or five shots on target. We're lucky that Vicario was in top form. Otherwise, it could have been a cricket score at halftime. Hoiberg kept trying to play out from the back. Can't play it. He's overhitting passes, giving the ball straight back to them. And um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there was literally only one way we were playing and it played right into their hands. They knew exactly what we were going to do before we did it. And we became too predictable. And it was really easy for them to pick us off. And um, obviously, I think defensively as well, we were all over the place. Kuliseski pulling uh, the guy's shirt. That was really lazy. It's always going to get given with VAR. And um, yeah, we just we just allowed them to play. And yeah, you know, the 4 nil flattered them. No, to be fair, it didn't flatter them. 4 nil was actually quite, you know, I know uh, Estepania hit a fantastic shot. But at the end of the day, look how much time and space we gave him. He had all the time in the world to set himself up and take that shot. And I just think the guys just weren't playing for, for the team today. Son just looked distant. Um, Richarlison had a few chances, but he kept getting caught offside. He reverted back to the old Richarlison. The last three or four games, he's been fantastic. That was the Richie we saw at the beginning of the season where nothing seemed to go right. And I just hope that it's a one-off. But if we continue to keep putting square pegs in round holes, we are going to get these type of performances. Um, people are saying that we don't have the personnel and the players. We've got centre-backs on the bench. Yes, they're young. Yes, they've never played at this level. But at some point, you've got to give them a chance. Otherwise, what's the point of them being in the squad? We can't keep playing the same guys that are doing the same thing over and over and over, making the same mistakes, and you expect them to then come good. It doesn't make sense. So... Yeah, unless he changes some, you know, sometimes you just got to accept what you've got and tweak things a bit. You don't have to change your whole philosophies, but it was almost suicidal at some points, the way we were playing into their hands. It was. I mean, that's why I bring you in. We've had Ange come out in his post-match presser who says that it's fair to say we look like a tired team, which is understandable. We've had a We've asked a lot of these players for a long, long time. And we lacked a little bit of energy given the game that we had. They're a good team and we struggled to cope with them. We hung in there and all you can ask for that they left everything out on the pitch. There are no grumbles from me with regards to the penalties. They were clear and obvious. It's amazing that VAR picks up everything apart from a tackle that maybe puts out another of our players. There were positives at the end. This group of players are giving everything at the moment. It is demanded to play the football that we ask and they are doing it week in, week out. It's not for a lack of effort. We haven't been able to give the players a break at all. And what we ask is pretty taxing. What do you make from Ange there in those comments for you, Vass? Well, he's not wrong, is he? I mean, Patrick's saying we got centre-backs on the bench. we got one who was playing for the under-21s. Oh, that's the limit of his experience. And the other one had 18 games in the championship. Um, we haven't been able to rotate our squad um, and, and this is because of the injuries and the suspensions that we're facing. Um, and so perhaps tiredness is quite clearly a factor. Our options are a factor. We're unable to rotate the squad. We're unable to... Pro possibly the only thing he could have done today was maybe start the Celso instead of Hoybier, um or, or Dyer instead of Emerson Royale. Um, at least... Dyer is a centre back. So, um, but aside from that, I mean, I, I don't have too much to to comment on what um, Ange said there. I think I think he's he's spot on. Um, the, la the not being able to rotate is 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 causing issues for us. And I just want to shout out somebody in the comments called Jordan Wilhelmi. He's made some good points in the in the comments tonight. Um, we had 40 touches in the Brighton penalty area today before we had a first shot on target from Udogi, right? So something's happening, but it wasn't quite clicking. And of course, we then focus on what the midfield aren't doing and what the defence aren't doing because before we know it, we're 2-0 down. And why were we 2-0 down? Because Son tackled himself, no pressure on him, 
He tackled himself, lost the ball, went to Brighton, handed them the initiative, and then he didn't get back to help Udogi, who had two men behind him on the back stick, and that enabled them to go 1-0 up. And then we had Decky do a stupid shirt pull in the area, and before you know it, we're 2-0 down, and we're chasing the game, and Brighton are starting to take the piss. Fine margins. Fine margins in football. We've got to be... um, Yeah, go on. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, Crack's bringing you back in. Look, I mean, on that point, he elaborated, uh, Potter Gordon said, look, we looked a little bit tired and we're lacking sharpness. It's understandable because we've been on this run now for a while. You know, I know I don't want to make excuses, but please don't dismiss the effort of the players. They're giving everything. Even if they aren't shit physically, they're still giving everything they possibly can. And we're still trying to survive in games hard and late, despite, of course, the number of injuries and suspensions that we're picking up. Crack's for you. Any really bugbears about the way Potter who set the side up tactically today? Uh, well, I mean, Patrick made a, a point about Postacoglu and maybe just tweaking things a little bit if you haven't got those players and playing, playing the hand that you dealt. You know, a poker player will always find a way. If he's not got the cards, then you do something different. You don't go all in, do you? If you do, then the casino always wins, always. Just to take issue with a few of the the, the comments, I I love the comments, by the way, and I love how people get involved. When when Patrick says, I don't really like asparagus, people go, (laughs) oh, you hate veg. Why do you hate all veg? It's that (laughs) analogy again, isn't it? Patrick's... (laughs) You know, he's not screaming Ange out here, nor am I. Just, I love Ange. Patrick love yeah. Ange, Ange, loves Ange. We all love him, but just sometimes, you know, if if you dealt 18 in blackjack, just Stick. knock the table. <laughs> Stick, you know? Yeah. Don't go looking for that, that three card or the two card or an ace, you know? Just sometimes go, mm, okay. I might just have to do a little tweak here if you've if you've got that personnel. So, but you know, some people in the comment, oh, you, Patrick's wanted Ange out from day one, and he's like, it's just not. Can't please calm down. Which he can be questioned. You know, you can look at things and say, okay, maybe this needs a look at. Maybe that can look at. Honestly. There's never any grey anymore, is there? Just like just finding a few little bits. It's the same with players as well. So, look, but we've also got to accept that he isn't going to change. So, even if we do call for it, he isn't. And I, I, I get that. It's is it brave? Is it stupid? Is it a mixture of both? I, I, I don't know. But all I know is if it doesn't work. It, it'll be out the door because that's that's the life of a premiership manager, isn't it? You know, you might as well be a mayfly, to be honest. If it doesn't, if it doesn't work, so and, and he'll take that with good grace if it doesn't work, and he'll get the plaudits if it if it does work. So, yeah, you know, he's 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 putting brave faces on with with what he said, what he comes out and says to the press, and what he says in the dressing room to players will be two different things. You saw. That that wry smile and and the, the disapproving shake of the head after what Kulu done. I mean, that that's just brainless. That that was that was Tottenham in microcosm tonight, wasn't it? That absolutely brainless. You couldn't honestly, you couldn't be any more watched if you was in North Korea on a football pitch <laughs> now, could you? And and he, he's done now. What day of the week did he think? He was well. He did get he's away with one before. Did he think he was going to get away with another one? It's just not, not happening. But you know that that leads on to another point, Rick, of uh, of things being fair with decisions. He got away with one now, didn't tonight? Um, and Dunk's challenge, by the way, was disgusting. Because I'm telling you, ten like this is this is away from the performance. It, uh, just as a little little side issue. If Romero made that challenge tonight, he goes. He goes 10 times out of 10. I'm sorry if I've sort of brought things a bit forward for later in the in the uh, running order, Rick, but that was absolutely disgusting. How does he get a yellow and Romero goes every time? It's just, you know, it, it, and there's been a few incidents like that as well. Forrest were a little bit 
kick it, having a good kick of us and a, and a good go. And you think to yourself, well, why are we taking bookings like and cards left, right, and centre? And other teams just seem to be getting away with it scot free. So that from tonight from Dunk was uh, was 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 terrible. But what was more terrible was the inconsistency in decisions across games and teams. It's just it's not on Rick. No, look, I agree with you on that point. And you actually said about making a point of sticking up for the players. It's difficult. It's been difficult this whole run. We've been stretched for a very very long time. We've just tried to play through in terms of you know the players we've got available to ourselves here. That's what we've tried to do. We're only in the position we are in because of the enormous efforts of the players to do their jobs. That is normally not in their brief, but they do it willingly. They give everything for the shirt. For me, that's all I can ask for. The players are giving everything they've got, and it's a credit to them. In terms of this game, we fell short, but not for the want of trying. But listen, what we are going to do, we are going to throw our first break of the show for our listeners on audio. Taking you into that break, you are going to hear directly from Ant Pastor Cogler who gives you his thoughts on the back of that defeat. We've got over 1,400 of you here watching us live. Thank you so much, as always, for all your incredible support for Last One on Spurs. We're joined by Richard Cracknell, Patrick Tyron, and the doctor is back, Vasconi. <laughs> Dr. Tottenham's very, very own Vasconi here. Um, guys, we're going to fly through the lineup as it is a late edition of a Last One on Spurs. Uh, they made two changes to the team ahead of this one. Emerson Royale, who played well defensively at left back against Everton, came in at centre half for Spurs, where he had already placed twice this season before the game. Destiny Doggy was back from suspension. It is the third time this season that Spurs have started a match with a defence entirely compromising of full-backs. In midfield, Oliver Skip missed out entirely of a knock, but he should be fit and available for selection for Bournemouth on the weekend. That means Postacoglu had nine first-team players unavailable to him for the match. Pierre Hoybier came in to that number six role. Giovanni Lacelso came off the bench for a positive cameo following the Toffees win, obviously, of course, at the weekend. And he was amongst a very youthful bench for Tottenham, which the lineup revealed Vicario Porro Romero, Davis Adogi, Saar Hoybier, Kuliszewski, Johnson, Richarlison, Son, with a bench of Forster, Phillips, Dyer, Dorrington, Santiago, Villiz, Lacelso, Hill, and Donnelly, too. Like, I think we've already, in terms of the lineup, there's Obviously, we've had that debate already in terms of could we maybe have played a couple of the youth players there. But Ange stuck with really what he felt for him was the tried and tested. And in terms of the game itself, Spurs did start the game fairly fluently going forward. But being honest, really extremely shaky at the back. Vicario was forced into two saves within a couple of minutes. The second, a brilliant reaction from Danny Welbeck. And I think, again, once again, you look back on that game, taking the emotion out, it again, once again, uh, reaffirms the fact of just what an incredible signing Guadamara Vicario has been for Tottenham. Because time after time, some of the saves he does, you know, they're match winning saves game after game. And they really shouldn't be looked over or glossed over because he has been arguably one of the most signings of the summer. Brighton did eventually take the lead. It was all too easy for João Pedro, who dribbled across the edge of the Spurs box, passed a few changes, not the ball to Jack Hinshelwood to lash him a powerful strike. Really poor goal for Spurs to give away. Um, Pat, let's come around to you. You know, you've said, again, numerous times on this show, the need to close players down, don't let them have efforts and goal. And Spurs really... Didn't really take heed of that. You know, we saw time after time players given so much space on the edge of the box. And you always felt on this game, Pat, the first goal was crucial. It went to Brighton. Yeah, no, Ricky, great, great summary, great build up. Um, if we're going back to the lineups, I know this is my opinion, but for me, I would have started a natural centre back in Phillips, give him a chance. At the end of the day, what's the point of signing a youngster who did really well in the championship, is considered a bright, you know, spark for the future? Now's the time to play him as opposed to playing fullbacks because you're going to get the issue, which is what we had, where no one really knows their position and doesn't know when to put a tackle in. Like you said, uh, Jao Pedro was waltzing across the box, passed the ball to um, uh, to Hinshaw Wood. Fantastic strike, to be fair. Keeper, no chance. But I feel that a natural centre-back would have actually got closer to the player and made him make a decision instead of him having uh, literally the run of the park to do that. And then also, we all can agree that in terms of a midfielder, uh, Lo Celso is so much better on the ball, actually does something, he's positive, he makes the right pass. I would have put Lo Celso in for Hoiberg, 
started Skip deeper and then had Kuliseski as one eight and Lo Celso as another. It would have given us a bit more creative flow, a bit more juice. And then hopefully Saar and Kuliseski defensively would have given us that balance as well. Those were the changes I would have made. Other than that, it was pretty much the team you would expect with the personnel we had available. And I just felt as well, yeah, like we just, in the first half, we just didn't seem up for it. Like we were just a bit too late in the tackle, a bit too late closing a man down. And um, we we're kind of like the architects of our own demise. Um, I see one of the comments. I know Vasquez don't check the comments, but you're naturally going to do that because you want to interact with people and you want to obviously see what people are saying. And there's a guy called Paul Falco. So shout out to you. Sorry, Paul. Paul Falco. He said, Patrick does seem to be a bit negative about Ange, to be fair. I don't think I've been negative. I just called him out for what I thought today. He got tactically outdone and he didn't seem, in my opinion, quick enough to make changes as opposed to what was going on. You could see Brighton kept knocking the ball over the top. Tell the guys to drop a bit deeper. We don't have a Mickey van der Ven who's really quick and can play that sweeper defensive role. Or we don't have a Romero who's not the quickest uh, you know, uh, player out there, but he's so good at reading defensive positioning and his, sorry, his position is so good and he reads the game well. You're not going to get that with fullbacks playing as centre-backs and they just knew that and kept knocking the ball over and it was just too easy and too predictable. And the last thing you want to do as a team is be predictable where every team that plays you already knows how to sit up against you. They work on that all week and throughout the whole game they just have our number time and time again. And uh, I also felt going forward, we were almost trying to walk the ball into the net in the first half. We were playing all these like intricate patterns of play, but we were always looking for the perfect goal. Sometimes be direct, take a man on and get a crossing or whip a ball in. Like when Brennan Johnson did, he whipped it into a good area, but no one was there. I just felt sometimes we were overplaying. And again, that makes it easy for Brighton because all they've got to do is step off and allow you to play that and then clean it up. So, um. Yeah, I mean, no one's perfect. Managers make mistakes from Pep Guardiola to Jurgen Klopp to even Arteta. Those are the three best managers in the league at the moment. There's plenty of times where they make mistakes. But at the end of the day, we can call it out. It doesn't mean I want him out. It doesn't mean that I'm going crazy. But you can call it how you see it. If a player doesn't have a good game, you can call it out without being negative. And I just hope some of our fans can understand that. I thought today, no one really had a good game apart from Vicario and apart from Yodoji. So you can call it out and speak on it. Don't have to be toxic, and I thought as well. Uh, Ange Postecoglou wasn't that great. Yeah, I don't think. Do you I know don't what, think Patrick's Rick? been um, toxic at all. I, you're absolutely right, mate. I don't disagree with you. you. You know, disagreement is part of part of the discourse, isn't it? It's what you do when you're mm -hmm. podding. You, there are alternate point of views at the end of the day. No one's a hundred percent right a hundred percent of the time. I got to say, even there, even the back. goat. Of presenters, Ricky Sachs once fell off of his stool and everything came <laughs> crashing down. I think this was this was Ange falling off his presenter's chair tonight, wasn't yeah, it? It, it happens. Once, yeah. But you yeah. but you dust yourself down and come go back to being an award winning podcaster. Carry on, Rick. Well, you know, I must say, look, post. bless you, mate. I'm waiting for it now. I can hear the ching arriving. Um, I think again, what we all know is there's no doubt about it. Football is made of opinions, and that's the beauty of it. Because if we all agreed what would be the point? And that's why I think everyone sees different things. And that's what podcasts are for. They're there for debates. One thing, unfortunately, that I don't think any of us could really debate was Brighton being given a penalty. Now, you know what? I will share the steal of the decision from Kulisewski to pull the shirt of Danny Welbeck because I'll, I'll never quite understand you know, any player in this day and age now where there's cameras absolutely everywhere, as Cracker so eloquently puts it earlier, to grab another player's shirt or hold another player in the box, what other outcome is there really? It means for Kulisewski, there's yet another suspension that's heading Spurs' way. That's for him. He'll miss the Bournemouth game after collecting his fifth yellow card of the season. And, you know, a game where really it was hard enough at 1-0, but to go 2-0 down, we know the Premier League, look, some will say 2-0 is the most difficult scoreline, but to give Brighton a two-goal advantage where, quite frankly, they were flying. I mean, that's in your time as a referee. Got to ask you now, is that one of the most brainless decisions <laughs> to make, given the fact now that there's cameras everywhere? What is going through Dian Kulisewski's mind? And I do have to say before you come in there, Vass, he did the same thing at Everton only three, four days ago. Maybe you got, away, got with away with that one. Yeah. I'll try it again. Can you understand it? Do you know what? There's two there's two two issues with what he did there. One, he was just lazy, right? That's just lazy defending. And two, 
he gets himself suspended for the Bournemouth game. Maybe he wanted to rest after uh, after this period of game. Who knows? But you're quite right. It, it was brainless and unnecessary. We're one nil down. We're reeling because uh, they're putting us under pressure. We're struggling to get rid of the ball or what have you. And what Kulisevsky does there by giving the penalty and letting them make it 2-0, it doesn't give the team the time to regroup and try and reassert themselves on the game. You were already on the back foot. Now you're on two back feet or however you want to put it. It's, um, yeah, it, it was brainless. It really, you know what? I did actually wonder whether there, was a, whether there was a foul leading up to that by Dunk on Richarlison. Obviously, um, yeah, VAR didn't pick it up anyway, but no, that was a blatant penalty for sure. Yep, it was. It obviously resulted in Brighton going 2 0 up. Then, moments after that, Milner hit the post from the edge of the box, and it was what Pat come back to Spurs being really rattled in that first half. And look, I'm a big, big fan of Brennan Johnson. I think in time, he's going to become a really, really good player. But he had a really great chance to get Spurs back into that game. But he just couldn't get his touch right to get the shot away. Yeah. Just a word on him, if I can come to maybe you, Cracks. Look, young player that's come in, big, big price tag on his shoulders. I think we saw in his first early weeks of Tottenham, there's going to be a potential player there. Are you concerned, Cracks, that maybe he's suffering from a little bit of lack of confidence at the moment? Or are you backing him that he will find that form, goals and assists? It's a big step up. No disrespect to Nottingham Forest, to Tottenham in terms of, Profile comes where they're at now in terms of the sides, well, the other end of the table and what's expected. He's getting a run of games now. Do you think we'll find and see the breast of Brennan Johnson in maybe 2024? Yeah, he's he's still very young, but you can see what's there. I mean, he's got an engine on him. He's got some speed. He's got a nice touch. So how old is he now? Do, do we know off the top of our head? Was he about 20, 20, 20, 20, 22, 22, 22. 22. So you know, for for 22 years old, I'm seeing a really good player. I, I, I really like him. It's, um, he's going to have dips and he's going to have good games and he's going to have periods where he's, where he's, he, he drops a little bit just due to, due to his age. But overall, what I see from him, I think he's an excellent signing and I think he's got bags and bags of potential. I, I really like him. I really like him. I think he's I think he's a terrific little player. In games like tonight where it's not quite happening, he's it it, it doesn't happen for him. Maybe like the head drops a little bit, but that's because he's 22 years old. But he will learn to find a way through that and hopefully become like a senior player that gets around and drags other people up. That's that partly what what we was missing a little bit tonight. Players like Sonny, Richie, those players of an age that never really got hold of the game by the scruff of the neck when when things were going bad and got round some of the other players led by example. So but from what I'm seeing for him for his age I, I really like him. He cost us £47 million, was it? Yeah, it I was a lot of money. Was, yeah, but well... You know what? But, you know what but is it now? <laughs> well, maybe it isn't. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, maybe it isn't. That's, but, that's, about, that's about sort of average player is, money. And, and he's more yeah. than an average player. So, uh, as it stands, you know... Look, when you look at somebody at Vicario at 16 million, that's an absolute steal. But like mm. uh, across the board, when you look at what players go for at 47 million pounds, that, that, that's decent. That's decent business now. I mean, the, the mind boggles really when you mention those figures. But it, in the economics of the game, it's not a lot of money. Mm. Do you know what, Craig? I don't know if you agree, but I don't think Johnson should. Ordinarily, Johnson would be a rotational piece, wouldn't he? He'd be coming on mm. every now and again. He wouldn't be playing the minutes he's playing if we never had the issues that we've had with injuries and no. suspensions and whatever. No. I don't know if you've, you agree but then that. I remember a young striker that came on because we was a bit short and uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a few True. years ago, and and look what happened to him. And you know, there was a young winger as well that sort of kind of got thrown in. And, mm. and went on so but that, that's you know that's a bit lap of the gods really some kick on and some just just don't don't they yeah. but he looks yeah. like he has got the potential to really really kick on for us 
He does. Listen, we'll keep our fingers crossed. In terms of that first half, uh, Buono out had the ball in the net again. Uh, I say again for Brighton, but the flag was up for offside. And then Vicario saved a 1v1 with Pedro after a sloppy pass from Porro sent the Brighton man away. And a couple of years going into half time, Vicario was the only reason why the scoreline wasn't really a cricket score because Spurs really needed half time to come at 2 0 down. Uh, Richie hits at the outside the post for Spurs with an attempt from the edge of the box. And I think we can all safely say, Pat, and I'll let you come back in here, Pat, going into half-time, you know, I don't recall too many first-half performances where Tottenham were, quite frankly, played majority-wise off the park. Was there any confidence from you, Pat, going into half-time that you would see a completely different Tottenham that would take the scruff by the neck and get the result in that second half, Pat? You know what? We went in 2-0 down. It could have been worse. So I went in with a bit of confidence thinking, you know what? Hopefully the boys show up for the second half because as bad as it had been, we still had chances. There were still moments. With Charleston getting caught offside, you know, I was playing through, but overplaying. We still had more of the ball. You know, even though they were con- they were comfortably the better team, we were still in the game, especially at 2-0. 2-0 is a dangerous scoreline. As long as they don't score next... You know, if we score and it's 2-1, it's game on. We have the ascendancy. You'll hear the away fans get behind the boys and then push on. But unfortunately, that wasn't to be the way. And like I said earlier, Estepinian, or Estepinian, I probably mangled his name. He um he had way too much time. And it was a fantastic shot. And, you know, Vicario is a top keeper. He almost got a hand to it. But when he took shot, I was like, you know what, fair enough. And they deserved it, 3-0 up. Then it went to 4-0 and I'm just like, oh, you know what, we're getting embarrassed here. But we showed a bit of fight and we came back into it and no one's going to talk about it because we got beat. But I thought the Celso was excellent when he came on. He showed some fight and desire. He tried to take the game by the scruff of the neck. 4-0 down, getting thrown on, you've got nothing to play for and you can go hiding, but he didn't. And I know, he, well, 3-0, sorry, because he gave away a penalty, didn't he? But yeah. he could have went hiding. He didn't. He wanted the ball. He always showed for the ball. He was making forward passes, making runs, getting fouled. He was really positive. And that, and that's all you can see, you know, Valise as well, when he come on. These guys still showed some fight and desire. And I know the game was lost, but if we would have got that, you know, Hoiberg hit the post, that 4-2, could have made it 4-3. And then it's a completely different story because they were wilting. But it wasn't to be, but I was I was impressed with Lacelso's cameo. Um, I thought that he played really well. And, um, you know, some positive positive signs in a a defeat is that this guy doesn't go missing. I felt Hoiberg was hiding behind the ball, wasn't trying to do anything other than wave his arms and just, you know, the same old crap. But at least when when the Celso came on, you saw something. You actually saw he was trying to make a change, grab the game by the scruff of the neck. At least if we're going to go down, let's go down swinging. And that was impressive for me, uh, especially considering where the game was and, you know, away from home, you hadn't started, you could have sulked. But he didn't. He just got behind the ball and played. All I got to say, Pat, he, just for me, Rick, he gave also, away that penalty yeah, I've, because I've, I've, nobody in defence was putting a challenge. Yeah, but there there was nobody, yeah, there nobody yeah. in defence was actually putting it in. So it was a little bit of a brave. Might as well be hung for a sheep as a, as a as a lamb. And he try. He's he's at least try to put a challenge in. So <laughs> it was it was a bit. Brainless, but, but also I to get pull why his he leg done back, it I because think. nobody else was doing their job. Mm, I mean, yeah, job. it's yeah. So I don't know. It, I wasn't as angry with him giving that away as I was with Kulu. If that makes no, sense, I wasn't. no, I, you know, I, I, it, I, it came, it came, yeah. it came from the from the right place in his in his thinking and heart. If you know what I mean, I do agree with you. I mean, the other thing I would say, Vass, you, I'll let you come in here on the cell. So for me, I just thought. That challenge, similar to Decky, to some degree, I just thought it was pretty brainless because I didn't think he need to make it, you know. And again, I understand what the crack is saying. There. The, the the point is that no one in defence was really dealing with it. But um, I just feel for me there was there's still <laughs> no need for him to have gone rushing in like that in a game where, look, I agree, he was coming on. And ultimately, as you guys have touched on their cracks and Pat, he was coming on and making a difference in terms of what he was bringing to the game. I just felt for me that the considering of the penalty and the nature of how he gave it away will maybe overshadow the cameo that he gave us. If you see where I'm coming from, no, I agree. I agree, I agree with Pat. I think he came on and and he he did some really positive things. Um, I think with the penalty, yeah, you're quite right. You can be annoyed with him. It was a definite penalty. He probably shouldn't have lunged in like that. But it looked to me like he thought he could get the ball, and then he actually tried to pull his leg away. Uh, cup to pull out of the challenge and as he did so 
I think he actually caught the guy and, and he went down. So, yeah, and, and again, cracks might, are my cracks correct as well? I mean, sometimes as a, as a defence, we we don't actually push onto the attackers to, to close the space. Um, Dyer's notorious for that. He's always backing off, backing off, backing off until it's too late. Um, but, yeah, somebody should have gone out and, and, and met the, the fella, but, it, you know, it is what it is. It was a stupid penalty. We definitely didn't need it. No. And it made the scoreline look horrendous at 4-0, definitely. It did. I mean, look, before that, there's a cut chance for Tottenham again. Uh, Richie scored. The flag went up for offside. He had the ball and actually hit straight after the restart. So Richie scoring twice with offside goals. Many saying he needs to learn the offside rule. I mean, look, the argument will be he scored three games in the last four before this. So I don't know if you can really criticise him on what was a bit of an off night, I think, for a lot of the Spurs players. Sonny being another one. We had uh, Destiny Adogi, two chances in quick succession. Um, I know you guys won't want to discuss it, but I'll quickly mention it. Of course, Brighton's third. That dipping strike from distance from Esther Punian, it nestled in the far corner. He hit it perfectly. And look, despite Spurs starting that second half a bit better, they were punished really overall for the lackluster display. Lacelso Hill, they were replaced by Shah of uh, Saar and Richarlison. Uh, there was a chunk of minutes for Elho Valiz in what we really felt like his first time to really be given a substantial amount of time. And that's what led to his first goal for Spurs. Sonny picking him out after a Kuliszewski tackle and the Argentine bouncing home a shot that found the net. Uh, that's asking you with this now. With Valiz scoring, do you see him getting a more consistently run of games? And if so, does that rule out potentially Spurs looking at a forward in this January transfer window coming up? No, I don't think so. Uh, it was great to see him score. Great to see him get a few minutes. Um, I think the kid's going to need time and he is still a kid, even though he's a big boy for his age. <laughs> um, so I was pleased for him tonight. I, I don't know whether it solves our, our striking problems. Of course, we have needs all over the pitch, particularly at centre-back, which everyone's quite familiar with. Um, but I just think it'll be more of the same. I think Valiz will come on and just get you know, 10, 15 minutes here or there and, and, and that'll be it. So he's, he's still very raw. Uh, in my opinion. And when we look, I say, at the timing of Villiz's goal, we saw Kulosevsky take uh, a tackle, studs to his ankle, which Cratch, you picked up on already. And as that is saying, in terms of the way in which our players seem to be getting some real rough treatment on the pitch with, let's be honest about it, they're facing some really aggressive opposition. And for our watching mm. audience, we're showing a still of that tackle by Dunk. Rich, in what world... Is that not a sending off for you, given we've seen Spurs players this season go for far, far less? Well, it's not a sending off if it's not a sending off for for everyone. But this is the problem. It's the inconsistency. If if everybody gets a yellow card for that, then fine. That's what that's what they're allowing. I don't agree with it, but that's what they're allowing. But you can't send off. <laughs> Romero every time and then not not dunk. I mean, still somebody said, look at Dunk's face. I mean, that, that's a still. That might just be a, a grimace from actually going in for the ball rather than looking to like put uh, Kulu's ankle in in a row Z. Um, so it, it, it's a red. G given what else has been given as a red, that's that's a red. So. Um, I think this is somewhere now where the club, maybe they do do it, I don't know, and and need to start getting a little bit in officials' faces in, in, a, in, a, in a measured way. I know that doesn't make sense, but, you know, they need to start subtly telling the Premier League and the FA and the PGMOL how disappointed they are with things like that, because again, matey boy down the road does it all the time. He skirts along the edge of what's just acceptable, putting the pressure on subtly to make sure that it's in ref's heads that, you know, we're, we're not having this. We're not happy with it. It was, that was a criticism a few years ago, just to go a little bit off track with, with Martin Yol after the, um, the, the ghost goal at Old Trafford and they interviewed him afterwards and Martin Yole shrugged his shoulders and went, oh, you know, th th that's football. 
Fer Fergie wouldn't have done that. You know, Wenger wouldn't have done that. They would have been absolutely, Mourinho wouldn't have been doing it. They would have been screaming blue murder. So I think you know, issues like that and incidents like that tonight, the club really, really need to be getting comms out there that they're not happy about it. And if they get written to over their conduct and things that they say, and the odd 10 grand fine, then so be it. But you have got to start just getting those little edges and advantages and, you know, uh, and, and remonstrating a little bit. So you know, someone in the comments says, I don't want Ange to be like Arteta. Well, yes, yes and no. You know, you can take, you can take the little bits that he does where you think to yourself, well, okay, you go in the back for your, your team, your club, your players. Um, and lose the silly emotional, like, and not have the silly emotions and, you know, histrionics that you get with him as well. So, um, yeah, the, the club definitely, definitely need to be asking why that wasn't a red. Do you not think, um, sorry, Ricky, do, do you not think that Ange just sort of created a rod for his own back? Because you remember that interview he gave where he said, um, yeah, I was always brought up to respect the referee's decision. Yeah, he's kind of created a rod for his own back mm. there to, to yeah. sort of quit. Although, Rick, when you read his post match comment, it sounds like he did refer he, to that tackle, didn't he? Tonight, for the first time, I think he has come back and actually had a word on that. And again, just to reiterate what he said there in terms of the fact that for him now, about in terms of the officials, I think because we've said already on this show that there's been, as you've said there, Vass, almost the feeling that he's allowed you know, the point to get to it now where there's been almost a calming nature of him when it comes to the referees. But just so I can, I'm just going to try and reiterate what he said on the back of that. He said, look, in relation to making a point of sticking up for his players, it's difficult. It's been difficult this whole run. We've been stretched for a very long time. We've just tried to play through it. Um, but I think you will start seeing, if I'm less I'm wrong here, Vass, do you think we'll start seeing more of a harder side to Ange when it comes to maybe some of these tackles that are becoming quite frequently you've got to say yeah now. I, I think I think we will see it because we've been kicked all over the park all season I mean Madison before he went down at Chelsea after being kicked about three times in that game he'd been kicked in every game prior you know and then we had that incident with Matty Cash who just whacked Benton Core who was fresh back from a, a long layoff and yeah we, we have been kicked around and referees have not really been giving our players protection. And I know that might sound like, sound like bias and sour grapes, but I, I don't really care. This is what's happening to Spurs players right now. And I think tonight might be the first sign we've seen of um, Ange actually starting to have had enough. I mean, yeah. the guy wants to compete, and we're pre being prevented from competing because all of our players are in the bloody treatment room. Absolutely. I mean, Pat, just to ask you a question, if you don't mind... Kulisevsky as well, obviously picking up a ban that will rule him out of Bournemouth. We're going to come on to them in just a second. Pat, do you feel for you there's a disciplinary issue at Tottenham that still needs to be resolved? Do you feel, going on the other side now, players aren't doing enough to respect the fact that we need them to stay on the pitch given our injury crisis at the moment? No, not really. I think that, obviously, what Kulisevsky did today was very lazy. And that's a cheap yellow card to give away and a very silly and cheap penalty. So that one, you take on the chin and say, fair enough. There's no arguing with that. You know, he got done. It's lazy. He got caught out. VAR never not going to give that. But when I'm seeing our players get kicked, punched, fouled, you know, every single game without a shadow of a doubt and we're never getting anything, it comes to a time where you're like, why are we? Like your doji, for example. Um, again, was it Aston Villa or Nottingham Forest? I can't remember. I think it was not uh, Nottingham Forest. Shoulder to shoulder, literally a shoulder barge, not even a foul, and he gets a yellow card and he's suspended mm. for a game. That's crazy. We were getting kicked and punched and prodded all over the pitch. We literally cause one foul. That's not even a foul. And he gets a yellow and he misses a game. And I'm seeing it happen time and time again. I'm seeing our players get punched. Reese James literally punched Emerson Royale Yadoji uh, when we played Chelsea. Nothing was looked at today. I don't know how Dunk got away with that. As soon as we create a foul, they check VAR checking it for 10 minutes. Dunk, as soon as he did that, they literally waved it on. And that was it. So I don't understand why some, uh, you know, some of our challenges are scrutinised and looked over with a microscope and others aren't. And um, yeah, of course, sometimes, you know, players are lazy. Like Romero, when he went through um, 
uh, Fernandez's leg, uh, Chelsea. You know, some argued he got the ball. As you could see, he kind of left something on him. You know, he did. Uh, but if it's a red card, cool. But just give it in every other circumstance, and that's what's frustrating us because they're not doing that. Um, so I don't know. What, what do you do? Because if you say to the players, "Stop doing that," you take some of the bite and fight out of the guys. Today, in my opinion, we didn't have show enough fight, and we're still getting carded. So I don't know. I don't really know where you draw the line. But all I know is that we're not like Vass is saying. We're not getting protected. We're not getting the rubber the green. We've had one penalty all season. Today, Brighton got two in one game. So it just goes to show. And I think going into this game, we led the league in uh, touches in the opposition's penalty box. But yet we've had one penalty all season. It's crazy. So I just think there's a massive discourse between what we're getting and what other teams are getting. And something needs to be said. And I agree, Ange needs to be a bit more mean on that side. And so be it if he goes against what he said previously. So what? You're allowed to contradict yourself or change your mind or change your opinion. Uh, if it protects the team and protects the players. Because I feel right now he's been painted as a super nice guy and it's ultimately affecting the Tottenham team. Absolutely. And, um, and he's learning on the job as well, isn't he? I mean, yeah. I, I, he, he's, he's a good manager, but there's nothing like the Premier League. And I think he might have had a, an idea in his head what it's like. And I think it's he's come in and he's like, Oh, blimey, this is like this is off the scale. This is much more than I thought it was. Um, you know, there's there's a lot less jo uh, jovial way about him when he first came in. There was, you know, there was quite a lot. It was, you know, there was a lot of that sort of oh, the flaming galah thing that we was all talking about, and a little bit of an Uncle Buck almost persona to him, wasn't there? And I think we he's just, yeah, he's, yeah. he's, I think he's just beginning to think to himself, I can't be this person. I want to be you of that, you know, uh, Corinthian spirit and the refs' decisions and things. I think he's, he's looked at that and gone, that's just, that's just not, not the game you play in the Premier League. So he's somebody else learning as well as the players, you know, that, that are coming through. So big learning curve this season, big, big learning curve. Didn't yeah, that Brighton player did. score his um, like seventh penalty of the season? Yeah, Jar Pedro. Eighth. Yep, Jar Pedro. Seven yep. or eight penalties in a season. We've had one in like 35 games or whatever it is. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I actually thought we could have had one today. I thought it was a foul on Son. Um, VAR didn't even let me look at it. Or no. And they, they kept going on about, oh, Son went down too easy. Well, I'm sorry, mate. If it's a penalty, it's a penalty. It doesn't matter how he went down. Yeah, anyway. I agree on that point. Yeah. Uh, as we look to close this one, obviously, Ben Davis got Spurs a second goal back in the game. There was a mere hope for those last seven or eight minutes. Spurs could really make a game of it. Uh, Pedro Porro's cross, what I've got to say, was absolutely superb. Worth me noting again, Pedro Porro has provided more Premier League assists in a single season uh, than anyone in 22, 20, uh, sorry, 23, 24. Uh, he's been phenomenal, you've got to say, this season, Pedro Porro. After that, Hoybier hit the post. Porro saw his effort blocked. And as we close the game, uh, Destiny Doge completed the most final third passes, 19 out of 22. I created the most chances during that game. One of the few bright spots there was, but Spurs, of course, beaten by four goals to two. We're going to close this one just to quickly ask the guys on a quick five of our next game to come, which, of course, is Bournemouth on Sunday. <laughs> New Year's but, Eve, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, New Year's Eve. God, will it be a good New Year's Eve for Tottenham? The final game of what's, let's be honest about it, it's been a tricky, tricky year as Spurs fans. Uh, Vass, we face yet another informed team <sighs> coming to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Bournemouth are unbeaten, <coughs> unbeaten in their last seven Premier League games. They are flying under their new manager. How tricky, how tough is this going to be, Vass? On oh, it's New Year's Eve, it'll be very, uh, very uh, tricky. Um, the only saving grace is that we're going to be at home. Um, hopefully, the fans will get behind the team and and sort of spur them on a little bit. But yeah, it's a concern. You don't want to go into any game with four fullbacks <laughs> as your defensive line. Um, but yeah, hope hopefully, well, Deck is out as well now. That's that's going to be a problem. I think. Um, Hopefully, Lo Celso will start in this game. And I don't know what he's going to do about the centre-back pairing, but 
you know, uh, as I said before, there's not a lot of options there. If he wants to throw one of the kids in, I, I can't see it happening personally. I think we're going to have to expect the same. Vas, prediction? Oh, no, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like, that, that like, 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 no, nah, not me, mate. That sounded like No, not me, mate. Not me, mate. I'll tell you what, Vas, I'll make it easier for you. We have 11, 11 players to put out. <laughs> oh, just about. I think I if you turn you. up in your boots on Saturday on, on Sunday, Rick, you might get well, a game. You, mate. I think you might get a game the way it's going at the moment. I tell you, yeah, even at my age, yeah, exactly. Oh dear, it will be tough, though, won't it? I mean, I bet in the game itself, yeah. it's going to be really, really tricky. I mean, can you can you see us getting out a win there? I mean, it's a you know, Bournemouth. They are getting results home and away, unbeaten in seven. They're flying at the moment. I, I think that we can score. It's probably you know, curse it now. We can score against anybody. We just yep. need to defend yep. like grown-ups, <laughs> you know? Yep. If we can, if we can defend against the likes of Solanke and some of the others who are in good good form at the moment, uh, and we can control the game in the midfield, then I think we'll be all right. I yep. think we're actually on 31 games scoring streak. I mean, there was a stat this yes. evening, I think, 32 is our record, is it? And that was from the double, just before the, uh, the double season. So... Yeah, the scoring thing is uh, is, is is to keep them out the other end, isn't it? With, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> with, with the four fullbacks, so perhaps we can get Graham Roberts and Paul Miller uh, <laughs> out from the uh, the executive. I reckon Rob would fancy himself as well. <laughs> get the corporate hosting, and maybe we can get them two two in. That that would do us, wouldn't it? On yeah. this game, Cracks, what I would say is that Spurs, they sit now fifth in the Premier League table, a point behind Man City, uh, three points behind Villa. West Ham are just over our shoulders there. They're in sixth place. They, of course, beat Arsenal. They're three points off us. In terms of the context of the table, Cracks, how big a victory would this be? Uh, I just feel at the moment you've just got to keep on winning because it's one of those tables mm. where a couple of weeks ago, like Spurs in a bit of distance, breathing space, and you look at Newcastle now, they've dropped down to ninth. Isn't that unbelievable, Newcastle dropping down to ninth in the league, considering where the two teams were respectively only a couple of weeks ago? How important, Cracks, would that game be on uh, New Year's Eve? And can you see Spurs getting a result? This is why the Premier League seems to get the Brazilian national debt in payments for TV rights and that. It's not the best football technically in the world, but it is far and away the best league in the world because there is absolutely no gimmies in this league whatsoever, none whatsoever. If you're off of it, you're going to get punished. Even even like Sheffield United, Forest, they will all punish you and punish you badly if you're not on it. So um, let's see what happens. You might see what, what we all saw at the end of the game this evening with Hill coming on and doing well, Valiz doing well. He might change it up. A little bit. I wouldn't be surprised to see Dyer as well on <laughs> come on. But then you know he, he's not the answer. But he wasn't that terrible when he came on the other last week. He was, you know. So I don't know. Let let's see. Let's see. It's um, we're at home. We always yep. score. Can we keep keep them out the other end? Um, I, I don't know. It's it's a double edged one. We're going through a moment. We need some personnel back. But overall, the overarching thing for the whole season is if you offered me this with a new manager and a new philosophy and losing such a big personality and part of the team in Kane, I think there's nobody wouldn't have wouldn't have taken it. So you know, there's there's been devil in the detail of the season so far. Um, let, let's see. Arsenal got cuffed tonight. That's that, one saving grace. One yeah, saving yeah. grace. It's although it's not about them, but you know what I mean. It always cheers you up. It doesn't helps. It, <laughs> it helps. <laughs> Cracks. You're going to be back with us on New Year's Eve for uh, what's going to be a really, really mini post-match analysis, given it's New Year's Eve. Um, yeah. Cracks, can we get a prediction from you for Sunday? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> um, no. I think I think we'll I think we'll just about nick a win. I think okay. we'll, we'll nick a little. We'll nick a little two-one win. And can I just do a couple of little thank yous as well? Because a couple of people in the comments have mentioned 
the poster over my shoulder here from at footballista on um on the socials it makes some terrific stuff that sent that through to me i love this poster these these film type posters he's done and lynn milford uh tottenham lady who's uh, a great writer and even as a boy from hackney i read a couple of her books in the last couple yeah i know a boy from hackney reading some terrific books on amazon so that's lynn milford have a look at those thank you very much shameless plugs Breaking news, breaking, breaking on that one. Cracks, thank you so much, mate. Pat, closing it with you. you. Spurs head into this game against Bournemouth where in terms of the injury suspension crisis, Dian Kuliseski out, Basuma out, Romero out, Mickey van der Ven out, James Madison out, Benson Core out, Solomon out, Perisic out. We're not out, Pat, are we? Can I change that to one <laughs> prediction, please, Rick? Can I change it now? Now you've said that. No, you got to stick with it. You got to stick. You got to uh, stick. What do you see? Uh, what do you see happening at the Spurs Stadium on Sunday? Can Spurs oh. grind out a win against Bournemouth? Yeah, I think we'll win, man. I hope so. I hope the performance will be better than than today's majority of the performance. I hope we see the same energy how we ended the game. Hopefully, the Celso starts. Maybe Valise will play a bit more of a cameo because there were some positives in the ending of that performance. Um, we're at home. The last home game of the, of the of the year, and Bournemouth were a good team. They're in good form, but I'm hoping that I think it will be a tight game. But I think we'll do them three one. So I'm going to be positive, even though today was a horrible result. I'm going to you know be positive and hope the boys can turn something around. Something's got to change in that centre back partnership. I don't know what it is. Ben Davis has to has to play. He's you know Davis wasn't terrible today. Um, he's been quite decent. As, as much as I'm not a fan of him and I feel that he's not the answer going forward, he didn't have a bad performance today. He's been quite solid and quite good over the last couple of games. He even has got on the score sheet today. So um, I think just Emerson Royale, he just gives me the heebie-jeebies when he's on the ball and trying to play out from the back. And of course, that's the way Andrew wants us to play, but he just doesn't look comfortable receiving the ball and making passes. So Dyer or Phillips has got to come in for him. Pick one of them. You know, you've got to pick your poison. With Dyer, we always know what we're going to get. He can be decent at times, but he can be awful as well at the same time. I know, I think it was Vass said that when he came on against Everton, he wasn't that bad. But the way he kept backing off Dan Juma, he was literally in the car park oh, yeah. when Dan Juma was taking his shots. And Dan Juma had like three or four shots and we were just lucky he didn't have his shooting boots on because the, the one thing about Eric Dyer is because he's got no pace and he can't tackle. He just backs off and backs off and backs off. And before you know it, you're in a decent shooting position. So something's got to give, but I just hope that the guys can string some passes together, be a bit more fluid in the final third, and that we go out on a high and we win 3-1 and kind of, you know, hope other teams drop points. The Premier League's crazy. West Ham getting a 2-0 a yeah. result away at the Emirates. No one would have saw that. No, actually, to be fair, when I was on Twitter earlier and I saw how riled up the West Ham fans were because Arsenal, like idiots, used Declan Rice in their pre-match programme picture. <laughs> and, um, that really got into the West Ham fans and that was literally their, that was their team talk. And it worked because they were on it today. And it was because of that West... Arsenal, if you look, go on Twitter and look at all the West Ham fans' comments from earlier today, they were fuming that Arsenal used that picture as, you know, as the picture for the post for the for the post-game presser type of thing. So or pre-game presser. So yeah. Um Premier League's crazy. Anything can happen, but we just need to win our games and then um the rest will take care of itself. Hopefully Andrew's learned something today as well. Cause like you guys said, he's new to the Premier League. He's learning. I do think he was he got he got found out today and it can happen. But um hopefully that's the last of that. Pat. Thank you so much, my man. Make sure you like, subscribe, go check out Pat's stuff. Pat, we'll see you on Sunday for, we. I keep calling this the mini post-match analysis. It'll be the quickest last one on Spurs you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Vass won't believe me on that. It will be. Is it before the game or after the game? Am I being confused? Because I'm going to the game. Is it? We're doing it before the game, right? Or is after, it the after the game. game? After, the after the game. game. Okay, after okay. the game. Cool, cool, half, yeah. hour, half hour tops. You can see yeah. Pat's Pat, if you're... If, Pat, so, if you're doing game analysis before the game, can you give me the not really numbers <laughs> for next week, please? You know what? Because every day is merged into one. I don't know what's going on. I don't yeah, Pat, if you can help me out and do it before the game, that'd be great. If we could do it before the game, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. Vass, you are the doctor. Where can everybody find the doctor's prescription on the audio feeds? Where can they find you on YouTube, of course? Where can they find the Dr. Tottenham podcast? Yeah, Dr. Tottenham podcast. Come and give us a listen, fellas. Um, we are on uh, Spotify and Apple iPods and wherever, Spreaker and Amazon Music. And you can find us on YouTube. Come and give us a watch as well. Um, yeah, be 
we just appreciate anyone who, who wants to join us and have a laugh. Vass, thank you for trying to keep us level-headed and balanced in what <laughs> always is difficult mate. shows straight <laughs> afterwards. But um, lots of passion, lots the curse of is back, mate. Oh, you're, yeah, the curse is back. <laughs> the curse is back. It is Tottenham. It is therapy. We are, we're not going to be saying that to you on Sunday. But, guys, thank you so much, as always, for all your incredible support for the show. Over a thousand have been in here and watched this show. So, again, can't thank you enough for all your support. It's not the result we wanted, but let's hope we're in a position to bounce back, of course, on Sunday from the wonderful Richard Cracknell, from the brilliant Patrick Tyrant, from the superb Vasconi. We've been the last one on Spurs. We shall see you on New Year's Eve from us all here. Please keep safe, keep well, and as always,